if you are doing this lab from a root account, you are okay to use another region for the purpose of this demo. So let me go to California. So we can start from scratch with an empty account similar to all of you. And this is with the new experience. So I'm going to start from scratch. This is what you will see from your root account. You go uh, to services and you select VPC or you search for it. Look here, the new VPC experience is active. Launch a VPC wizard. And this is will give me the first option, the resources I want to create, which is a VPC subnet. I will call this lab VPC and the CIDR block is 10.0.0/16. I don't need an IBV6. It will be the default tenancy, which means it's shared hardware, not a dedicated hardware. Now, how many availability zone I need? If you refer back to the lab sheet instruction, I need a two availability zone and I need two private subnet with two public subnet. I need one gateway in one AZ. If you are designing highly available system, you can create one NAT gateway per availability zone, which means in US, uh, US West 1A, we will have a NAT gateway, and US West 1B, we will have another NAT gateway. But for this lab, I just keep it one in one AZ. I don't need an SC3 gateway, so I will disable this. I could enable the NS host name, which is basically any EC2 instance launched in this VBC, it will be giving a domain name system based on its um, uh, name, name system in that particular VPC. And then if you look here, now it's show you the full details of your VPC creation. You have a lab VPC. It contains in US 1A, public one, US East 1A, private one, public two, private two. And also it will show you how these are linked with the route table. You can see the lab VPC public subnet is linked with the route table, the public one and the public one containing lab VPC one and two. And the private route table in the first availability zone is linking our private one US West 1A. And we have another private route table for the VPC located in US East 1C. So the wizard here created for me or choose 1A and 1C. In the networking connection, I have a lab VPC internet gateway, which is basically enabling all the EC2 instances in the public subnet to access internet. And we have also an NAT gateway, which will enable the private subnets that we have to be able to access the internet for software update and so on. If you choose now one pair AZ, you will find that there is one NAT gateway in US West 1A and another NAT gateway in US West 1C. I don't think this is necessarily, I can just choose one AZ. If you want to stick with the lab, so you want to keep it with the second ability zone to be the 1B, you can change this from here, but also you can just basically keep it to 1C. It doesn't really change the outcome of the lab. Now click on create a VPC, and this is will create the VPC based on the new experience. As you can see now, the VPC creation is completed. So I could view now my VPC and you will find in the new experience that it has done everything for us. So you don't need to worry too much about the steps. So basically you can do the lab in no time. I have all my submits available. Now the name and the tag is different because the wizard enforce a specific names. You could look also to the route table in the public, you can see the routes. The association is all done. And as we discussed, the private route table for 1A is associating us with an ad gateway and also link only a private one US West 1A, which is a good practice to have a separate route table for each availability zone. It will make our software highly available. Now I could switch to security group and create a web security group. So I'm going to call this web security group. Again, allow HTTP access. Don't forget, delete the default VPC and select your lab VPC, add a rule, HTTP, and this is, will be from anywhere, and click on create security group. The next thing I need to go to our EC2 here. If you can't see it, you, all you need to do is just to search for it from the search bar, just by typing EC2, and you will have it. 
it will be very handy as well to add it to your favorite in the new console. So you will have it here in the top bookmark bar here. Now launch the EC2 instance, and this is will take me to the a new experience of my uh, AWS management console. This is the new update. So I'm going to call this web server one based on the lab instruction. It will be Amazon Linux two. It will be Linux two AMI. So these are all the operating system. If I want Windows, you can find it here. If you want uh, Red Hat as well, you can find it here and so on. So you can find all these different type of um, machines that suits your need. Even if you want to have more AMIs, you can browse from here, you can see all of them. So uh, for this particular lab, I'm going to choose Amazon Linux 64-bit T2 Micro. And the key pair here, I don't have a key pair in North California. So let me create a new one. I will call this lab key pair. And just to make it easy for me to remember this, that this is US West region. And by the way, if you are using Mac, similar to what I use, you can you download it as a PIM file. If you are using Windows and you need to access via POTI, you can download it straight away as a PPK file. Uh, if you don't have, or by mistake, you download it for PIM file, you can use POTI gen to convert from PIM to PPK. It's straightforward, and the instructions are already available in the course. Create a key pair, and this key pair is downloaded to my computer. Again, keep it safe because we are going to use it in the future. I will keep all these to the default setting, only I need to change the security group. So in the security group, I could edit here the network setting and I select the lab VPC and I want to specify that this should be launched in public submit too. I want to enable auto assign public IP. I want to select an existing uh, security group, which is the web security group I created. You could also, uh, get an advanced network configuration, which we don't need at this step. You could also look to advanced details, like the host name, the instance profile, if there is any permission needed and so on. And here where you can find the user data. Again, you can copy the script available in the instruction and paste it as it is here. Uh, this is the right script and any script of these labs will work, guys. Any, any, any script that is available in lab two, lab three or lab four, they will work because this is will, all we need is to download this lab app.zip file and we put it in var www.html just to see a web page, a testing lab application. Click on launch an EC2 instance and this is will launch your EC2 instance as you can see here in North California. Don't forget that. We will wait for this guy to become running and available. Open a new tab and paste the IP address of the new EC2 instance. So at this stage, guys, you could just keep the setup here so you can carry on and do the rest of the assignments that we have. So for example, you could move now to the next assignment, which is the one which is introduction to Amazon EC2 instance. 